Hello, everybody out there on YouTube. We are the Middle Age Guys, and we're going to be bullshitting. Well, no, none of this video is going to be bullshit. All right. Uh, to get the introductions out of the way, I'm the Reverend. The theme here. And Gray Mouse One. Um, you know, it's very rare that... Um, okay, let me, let me step this back. Uh, when you grow up as a kid, you find things that you like. You find things that you are gravitating to. All right, as geeks, it it doesn't matter if it's if it's baseball, collecting collecting cards, you know, collecting bottle caps, video games, or, or something else. You're usually going to go ahead and you're you're going to go out of your way and you're going to gravitate towards something. You're going to find something that just draws you in. Sometimes it becomes a cultural phenomenon. But as kids, you don't always find out who the faces are or the names of the people behind that is. Um, thankfully, nowadays in this modern age, especially with the advent of something like this in the internet, you know, if you sit there, you see something like, like a video game or a movie or something like that. If you want to find out who made that, who is, who is the person with the big brain that put that up on the screen? You know, all it takes you is 10 seconds in the Google search, really. And you'll find that person right away. For us as middle-aged guys growing up back in the 80s, that wasn't the case. Um, and I, I have to say that last few weeks or, or what's happened over the last few weeks, not only has been very educational, but it's also causing me a lot of uh, a big reason to go out of my way to, to look back and, and reflect upon how my life would be without this. What am I talking about? Okay. Uh, you guys probably know this by now. It's it is uh, February 9th, but on on the twenty second of January, two thousand seventeen, actually almost a full three weeks uh, prior from now, uh, the founder of Namco, uh, Masaya Nakamura, died at the age of ninety one. Now, not only was he the founder of uh, Namco, but he was also um, they also dubbed him the father of Pac Man. Okay. Now, why is this so, so important? Okay. I already mentioned Pac-Man, but let me go ahead and back up a little bit more. All right. Um, Masaya Nakamura, uh, basically what happened was that he founded the publishing house back in 1955. Um, the company was called Nakamura Manufacturing and it was focused on making basically children's rides. You know, the, the rides like the, the little bumper car or the, or uh, Donald Duck or like the seahorse or whatever out, out in front of like the stores, you, you throw a quarter in and it bounces around for like 25 seconds and then it ends and the kid always ends up looking at you like that was it. <laughs> I was so fucking excited a, a little while ago and that, that was it, right? But that's how he started his company. Uh, he was basically a shipbuilder. He, was a, he w used to work on warships during World War II. After World War II ended, you know, he was pretty much left with a lot of engineering skill and not too many places to actually go ahead and apply it um, outside of, you know, reconstructing Japan and all of that. So what he worked with was pretty much arcade machines. Um, now, Namco itself got really big into, uh, into video games um, when Atari went ahead and they actually founded and they started going ahead and uh, expanding their businesses out and everything. Uh, they got really big. They opened up um, offices overseas in Europe, in Asia and everything else. And what happened was that when things started to actually contract and, and fall down on themselves, uh, Atari started abandoning their offices overseas and Namco bought Atari's Japanese offices, and that's how they entered into the video game uh, uh, business. In fact, Namco is actually an acronym for um, Nakamura Arcade Machine Company, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, he was pretty much the guy who went ahead and set up the company that would provide for the video game industry, by and large, its very first big iconic characters, all right? One word, or actually two, Pac-Man. No, without that, you got you got to think about it as a, what would video games be like without that? I really can't imagine it. Okay, now this might be something. This might be something really, really alien to to to, you know, if you were born, you know, later than than uh, 1990. This is probably something, an idea that's really, really alien, considering there's an Italian plumber as the most uh, famous video game character out and about, right? But back in the 80s, 
Pac-Man was it. That was the embodiment of video games. All right. Um, I can go on for stories, but uh, I, I will. I will give you one. Okay. Back when, <laughs> back as a little kid in, in grade school and everything. Okay. Um, I wasn't big on participation. I wasn't the kid who got a lot of gold stars on the fucking chart and stuff like that. You know, and I, I didn't get too many. I didn't get too many trips to the to the special grab back box and you know the the prize box and reach in and for things like that. But I remember there was one time that, that happened. All right, it was like in first grade, and I decided to go ahead and I, I I jumped to the to the box, and you know, I remember looking in the box and everything, and there was one thing that stood out right away for me. Okay. All the other kids who came to the, to the box, it took them like a few seconds to decide what they wanted to go ahead and grab, and then they'd grab it, and then they'd be wondering, oh, man, maybe I should have grabbed something else, right? I grabbed this shit, I ran back, and I was happy as a clam, and I was happy for a few months afterwards, all right? And what it was is a pair of fucking Pac-Man fucking shoelaces, all right? It, they were tying my shoes, okay? I, it wasn't like I could play with them, all right? If I played with them, it might have ended up like, you know, one of those instances where, I don't know, theme would have said that. Actually, that was one of the instances where I did get brand new shoes and I used my fucking shoelaces, my old ass shoelaces on my new shoes. I knew that was coming. <laughs> now that I think about it. But yeah, Pac-Man is like the very first cultural icon when it came to video games you know and all because of Masaya Nakamura and his ideas and what he decided to do outside of getting out of the military and trying to carry on his life as broken as it was outside of World War II um, I'm going to stop rambling <laughs> right now uh, what are you guys' thoughts on this man because uh, it literally it is a passing of an icon waka 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 maze game okay look Besides Pac-Man, let's think about Namco for a second. Mm. Games like Rally X, Mappy, Soul Calibur. Yep. yep. You, know, you got you, you look the Tekken series. I was gonna say Tekken. Uh, look, <laughs> it it. Pac-Man, dude, you talk about a cultural icon, just like, just as the Reverend said, uh, you know, is basically a yellow cheese pizza with a fourth of it cut off as a fucking character. Yep, yeah, yep. basically. Yeah, and, he, and when he was like that, he was at his best. Fuck him growing arms and legs and, and all that <laughs> shit. You know, Pac-Man sucked. Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures, that shit sucked. Pac-Man was made to be the fucking cheese pizza with the fucking slice gone. And let's think about this. Pac-Man, still to this day, still to this day, is not only iconic, but revolutionary to the video game industry. You have Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 that just came out not that long ago. And he and Pac-Man, it's still influence, influencing and still fucking providing fun for the gaming industry. He has stood the test of time and he deserves a lot of respect. Now, it's hard to comment on, you know, anybody's passing. My condolences goes out to, you know, friends and family, but we lost a gaming legend. That's basically who this was. Um, because, again, as the Reverend pointed out, you never really think about who creates what. You know, when we were growing up, we had no idea that knowledge. And, you know, there are certain things that we just didn't, you know, pay attention to when the credits were going up in certain games. Also, one thing that um, when we were growing up, too, in the early days of our uh, of video games, guess what? The developers, a lot of the companies didn't allow the developers or who worked on them to actually put their names on the in the fucking credits. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know. So, I mean, I'm not going to ramble for much longer, but damn. Pac-Man and all the other things that Namco has produced that we played, we had fun, we still have fun with. Man, oh man. Good shit and damn, thank you. <laughs> That's all I gotta say because without all that, I don't know where gaming would be, honestly. 
What about you, Gray Mouse? I know you have thoughts, sir. Ooh, well, uh, just I just can't believe he's gone. That that is a gaming icon. So we've lost gaming icons. Oh gosh, it's crazy. Pac Man, I remember vividly. Uh, always going to the arcade. That was the first machine I would go to, especially the the sit down tables. Um, I mean, Pac Man. It's it spawned uh, Miss Pac Man. Sitting cabinet, yes. Yep. Miss Pac Man. I mean, come on. Um, and, and even the Pac Man, you know, it told a story as you went through the levels. And of course, none of us have ever seen the credits roll on Pac Man. I mean. <laughs> just keeps going and going and going. You know, I mean, you could kind of brag, oh, I got to the 15th key or the 20th key or whatever, you know. But uh, at my house, when Atari had it, um, it was one of those things that um, you always beat. You know, it was a competition in the house. Mom had the high score. You always beat. You know, you wanted – you wanted. Dad had the high score. Your brother had the high score. Oh, yeah. You, so, so you sat there and played it. So you got the high score. So, and like you said, it's fun, Miss Pac-Man. And it just, it's really, really <laughs> sad that, that, that he passed. But 91 years, that, you cannot scuff at that. That's an awesome life. And like you said, what, what has he done in the, in, for his life? You know, World War II, he was building ships. He converted all that engineering know-how into making arcade cabinets and creating Namco. And if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have a Soul Calibur or a Tekken 7 that sh that's going to be released here shortly, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, I mean, for Christ's sake, I'm wearing the shirt right here. It, it, that says it all. It's just such an iconic – it just – everybody knows Pac-Man. And um, I think in Japan they call it uh, uh, um, Pac-Pac. Pac-Man or something like Puck-Man, rather. Puck-Man. And also, yep. you know what? If you're a fan, you know, if you grew up in the 80s, we all watched the cartoon. <laughs> the cartoon. I mean, how can you forget about the cartoon? Yep. When, yep. when he ate, you know, look, he was trying to find the, 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 the power pellet forest and those ghosts. He ate the ghost, and all he saw was little eyes going back to the closet. <laughs> look, iconic, iconic. It's... It, I, I'm sorry to say. Okay, okay, that was the exception of rule of, to the rule as far as him having arms and legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that's the exception to the rule. But I can't believe that none of you guys mentioned that. I was like, man, I can't believe you didn't mention that. The Pac-Man cartoon actually has Super Pac-Man there. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Uh, well, but that's. That, that's that's part of the reason why I said, you know, when it comes to Pac-Man, the first video game cultural icon, because before that, okay, you can go back and you could, you could, uh, the, the very first certifiable video game hit was definitely Space Invaders, all right? Yeah. But guess what? They didn't make movies about Space Invaders. They didn't have Space Invaders fucking lunch boxes well, or, or, or yeah, shoes. They, 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 I mean, they all didn't right, they have didn't, lunch boxes. They did have, yeah, but they didn't, lunch boxes. But they didn't have like cartoons. They, Not it, as much they, as Pac Man. I see. They, I see they didn't have a, a. They didn't have a top forty song that was there for weeks Pac based Man off Fever. of fucking space. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole thing. Um, you know, this is the very first you know large cultural icon that uh, yes. crossed over from video icon. games. Well, the thing too is that it is the it is the most recognized video game character. Everybody knows Pac-Man. Everybody knows the little yellow circle with a piece cut out. Everybody yeah. knows that. It's the, where, whoever you ask, they know Pac-Man. What? And, it, what? And he was just about on every freaking console, known to man. That and, and what a lot of people don't realize is that it had a lot of programming. Mean, each ghost, each individual ghost, had its own character, its own a personality. Was, yeah, a lot of people didn't know that. I mean, if you play. Pac-Man arrangement. That was one of the best versions of Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. Play that one. The Pac-Man Championship Editions. Play those. Please play those. I mean, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Again, all he did was go around and eat dots and ghosts if he ate the big dots. <laughs> and, and, let's... and fruit and keys and you know, like all kinds of stuff, but but far, 
but far beyond that, you know, it, you know, to go back to he's, he's even been in fighting games and racing games. Yeah, <laughs> but to you know, let's go. You know, before he even got that far, it all starts with the man Masai Nakamura. You know, the guy who founded it, and not only did he was he around during then, but he he served, uh, you know, all the way on the executive board of Namco. I think all the way until like the early 2000s. And then he was pretty much there in an honor, honorary role. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and if you think about the, the gaming landscape as a whole, okay, Namco has been there and it's been shaping experiences for gamers since day one, all right? Ever, ever since, ever since Pac-Man and, and before, like all the way throughout the, the 8-bit uh, generation, um, you have stuff like uh, ZVs and um, uh, what is it? Oh shoot! There's a um, um, Dragon Spirit and a whole bunch of other Namco games on on the NES, and there's also a f- uh, few on the other consoles. 16-bit, you know, they were there. Uh, and then where, with a lot of companies, a lot of Japanese companies, a lot of the big um, companies that were that were great during the 8 and 16-bit era, a lot of them lost their way going into into the 32-bit era with the PS1 and and the Sega Saturn. Ridge Actually. Racer. Well, yeah, Namco was actually one of the ones that they didn't lose their way going to the 32-bit era. They helped shape that whole fucking era, they and they, the they, they thrived on it. You Ridge know? Racer, Time Crisis, Soul, Tekken. Play, Soul Edge, Tekken. Yeah. Yeah, you know, all, all of these. Yeah, you know. You know and, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, all of this started from a guy who was – Wanted to go ahead, and he he literally just wanted to see kids smile, and that was it. All right, and and here's here's another history lesson. I I know we I want to step away from Pac Man uh, for a bit, but you know there's it's just something that needs to be emphasized. All right, um, for the folks that says video games was a, has been a a, a male dominated and a male centric fucking industry from day one. One of the reasons why Nakamura went ahead and he designed Pac-Man was that he wanted to make a game that anybody could play. All right. And in fact, he 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 targeted he targeted his game design and the way that the mechanics were set up. He was like, "This is something that you know, girls they you don't have to worry about it having any sort of gender bent." All right. This shit has been covered since the fucking beginning. Um, that's that's my big point on this. All right. And, uh, you know, <coughs> it's just, it's just a, a testament to the uh, grand work but of... But that wasn't the only one that anyone could just <coughs> play. That, yeah. that, I mean, you had Galaxian, Galaga, Dig Dug. Yeah. You know, you know there, old position games. Burger Time, you know, I mean, all of these Burger pretty Time much... Burger Time East, but I see your point. Yeah, actually, it's uh, I, I think Data East was the one who actually handled the um, uh, just building the cabinets, but it was actually it's actually developed by Namco. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yep. Um, but yeah, that's that's one of the things that that, that a lot of people, you know, Spl- especially you, now. Uh, uh, Splatterhouse. Yeah, Splatterhouse is 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 Namco also, you know. <laughs> but uh, that's that's one of the things. Like like I said. Growing up, I, 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 I'm almost ashamed to say that I, I never had a name behind the face. I didn't know. If, if this was the Wizard of Oz, I didn't know what the wizard's name was. All right? All the way up until just recently. Okay? And for that, you know, my condolences. Uh, but I have to sit here and I have to say thank you very much. You know, postmortem, thank you very much, Messiah Nakamura, for going out of your way and, you know, just because he wanted to find a way to make kids laugh, okay, and enjoy their, their time away, you know, to give them something, uh, a place where they weren't going to be worrying about things, you ended up building the, the most profitable entertainment media industry in the world as we know it right now. Well, he got my quarters, I'll tell you that. Quarters? Dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got a lot of money for me, too. <laughs> Was there anything else that we want to go ahead and add to this particular one before we wrap it up, guys? No. I mean, we just named a whole bunch of games besides Pac-Man that Namco has created and actually given us. And it's like, man, oh, man, still play those games to this day. Yep. 
Yep, just a lot of them. A lot of classics. Mr. Driller. Oh, yep. Yeah. Point blank. <laughs> Katamari Damasi. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Even I mean, even the Mario Kart arcade games are by Namco. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Oh. It's it's one of those things, like I said, they without without Messiah Nakamura, there is no Namco. Without Namco the arcade, not just the arcade industry, but video games as we know it right now, would not exist in the form that it is. Please. It, it, and, and to top everything off, you know, I mean, without him, arcades would not be as popular as they were back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking damn shame that arcades have gone by the wayside in today's world. But I just wanted to throw that in there. Mm. Yep. Yep. Uh, with that... Uh, we are the middle-aged guys, and we've been bullshitting about the passing. Well, no no bullshit about it. We've been talking about the passing of Messiah and Nakamura the last uh, 20 minutes. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and end this particular video right here. I am the Reverend. The theme here. Grand Mouse 1. Nakamura's son, thank you. Rest in peace. Once again, for the benefits of common sense logic and gaming. Credits. <laughs>